I'm Amy Zaccato. I'm in my fourth year of health and biomed. And I'm Philip Karpovich, and I'm an assistant prof in the biological sciences department. And my lab studies uh, circadian rhythms in the intestine. So what we're interested in, uh, in a nutshell, is how a tissue in the body, in this case the intestine, the digestive tract, has a timing to it. And circadian basically means 24 hours. So what we're really interested in is how biological activity in a tissue has a 24-hour timing that happens because, well, because our planet Earth uh, rotates around its axis every 24 hours. And it's just a fundamental feature of all living things on this planet. I think, uh, for instance, experiments that Amy's been doing on the intestine are, are shedding light on this, uh, on this topic. So um, my project this year, I've been with Dr. Karpovich for three years now. Um, my project this year is to determine at which stage in the Drosophila life cycle that the circadian clock actually develops. So I'm using a genetics approach using um, reporter lines, so I can see GFP wherever the circadian clock genes are expressed, fluorescent green color under the stereoscope. So I'm looking at live flies and you can see actual green fluorescence. It's almost like all the cells of the animal have a, a clock and the um, arms of the clock are really how much they glow green. So I'm going to be doing a time series, which is I dissect the fly every three hours over a 24-hour time period, and then I quantify the green fluorescent protein that I see and yeah. see if it's rhythmic. You know, our work is just part of a bigger picture of uh, studies, I think, that are going to really change um, both research and healthcare that's being done in biology because uh, people have kind of been ignoring the um, daily timing of different tissues, and they've been doing experiments most of the time, uh, assuming that what happens at you know uh, 1 p.m. happens at 7 p.m. happens at 9 a.m. But it turns out that's not the case. So. The circadian clock is such a has such profound impacts on biological functions in both humans and animals. So seeing how it transfers is pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's going to be majorly uh, important in healthcare really because right now we undergo treatment or diagnosis according to our work schedule, right? Rather than our body's timing. And so this is going to change, I think, uh, the way healthcare is delivered and uh, diagnosed.
I definitely have learned many techniques and I learn about them in class. So learning the theory behind it in class and then getting to actually see it play out in the lab is really cool. Like in genetics or molecular cell bio with Dr. Swan, I learned a lot about Drosophila. So getting to see that actually play out in the lab is really cool. Um, okay. Um, so research methods. So obviously all of the, if you want you can go through that again. Um, methods, so so. Um, I'm working with Drosophila, so I yeah. usually synchronize them to a light and dark cycle, like the circadian clock you was talking about. So I'll put them at 12 hours of light and then 12 hours of dark. And then um, I dissect them at different time points. So dissecting them under a microscope, I use tweezers and I um, actually take out the intestine of the Drosophila. And then um, I will mount the gut and stain it and then look at it under a fluorescent. So yeah, that's actually a, a raises a, an important point, and that's that. Um, so the circadian clock, these you know twenty four hour timings, they exist in all our cells, and they're on all the time. But if you do something like change the um, light exposure some animal gets, then you'll mess that clock up because that clock has to set itself according to the environment that it finds itself in. So for instance. If you fly from here to Japan, mm. you're going to change the time when you get light and darkness. And it's going to take a while for the circadian clocks of your body to readjust. And we call that jet lag. And jet lag is literally a readjustment of circadian clocks in your body to a new time. So when Amy says that she's synchronizing the flies, that means we're getting them prepared for an experiment where we know the timing that they're going to have. You can only cut up a Drosophila once. So, you know, you can't, you don't have to go there at 3 a.m. and then 6 a.m. and then 9 a.m. and then 12 noon because you can't cut up the same fly more than once, right? That's right? So, I mean, are you literally following a 24 hour cycle sometimes? Yeah, but you'll use different flies. So, as long as they're all synchronized to the same time, this fly at um, 7 a.m. and then this fly at 10 a.m., they should have the same rhythm. So, you could go back at 10 a.m. the next day? Um, yeah, you can do time points each day. Yeah, you could do like, 7 a.m., 10 a.m. the one day, and then yep, the next you can. day do the you other You could stitch them together because yeah. they behave the same way. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, so why does this work matter to you personally? I know you talked about that a little bit, but... Yeah, just because the circadian clock is such a, has such profound impacts on biological functions in both humans and animals, so seeing how it transfers is pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's going to be majorly uh, important in healthcare, really, because right now we undergo treatment or diagnosis according to our work schedule, right? Rather than our body's timing. And so this is going to change, I think, uh, the way healthcare is delivered and uh, diagnosed in the future. Awesome. Okay. Um, so what's next? I know you said that you're actually going to be doing that. Um, like, bigger picture, what's next for the project or for you or whatever you want to talk about? I mean, I don't know, I don't really think of, I, you know, we don't plan ahead that far, I guess. <laughs> right now we're going to see at what point the clock turns on in development, and then we'll, we'll see why that is. Mm -hmm. know, is it because certain genes that are involved in the timing of the clock are just not present until later on in development? And then everything kind of, you know, I don't know how to put it, crystallizes and it starts to work all of a sudden. Um, or if there's a single factor that's missing and then that's why it's not on yet and then that one thing turns on and it starts to move. Um, so, you know, there's different ways of looking at it, but that would be the next question we would ask. And then we would eventually try to translate the work that we do in uh, Drosophila to probably mice and human cells too, as well. Okay, so what's next for you personally? So you're in your fourth year, I'm assuming? Yeah, okay. so this is the, that's the extent of my project. I'm just going to be... Um, presenting on what I find on when the circadian clock develops and if it's acting as a circadian clock at that time and that's pretty much the extent of my project but people will be following it up after me. Right, so, yeah. but just in general though, like what do you, what do you do oh, next year? Oh, I applied to professional school, um, so yeah, that's, I'm waiting to hear back from that. Phoenix? Okay, do you have anything else you want to? I just think this is so cool. <laughs> it really is. Like. You know, I'm a parent, and I remember when my wife was pregnant with our babies, and she would be woken up in the middle of the night because she had a, a shark swimming across the front of her body. And I was like, look, 
The baby doesn't have a circadian rhythm, mm -hmm. right? Babies, you know, awake in the middle of the night. Yeah. And I, ju I just see how this research could have such a profound impact on particularly infant care, neonatal care. Um, there are just so many different things that suddenly leap to mind. I just think it's really an awesome project. Yeah, yeah. I uh, recently had two. Well, my kids are two and a half and five, so yeah. I've gone through this process. And 